America. Welcome to another simple truth. Now, probably, uh, if you're like me, you immediately notice on all of these videos that we're doing that frequently uh, people are wearing the same clothes time after time, week after week. Well, that's because we record things on the same day and then we release them. So you've seen this outfit, you've seen me now probably on three or four different things just in the last week looking the same because today is Friday, November 15th, and we are cutting a bunch of promos, doing a bunch of different things as we continue to grow down here in Drash Ministries uh, at the Epicenter. Now, my program is called Simple Truth. And I've said over and over that one of the hardest things in life to do is to stick with simple truths. Ah, we just have this tendency to make things complex. I have a tendency to make things complex. Anybody who knows me will tell you that, and if you could just stop talking for a minute or two, it would be simple. But I tend to keep going and keep going, trying to reiterate the same points. One of the questions that we are consistently asked this last week, I had the pleasure of officiating at two different funerals. And over and over, I was approached by people who said, Andy, you're different. What you're doing is different. And the truth is, I don't have enough time to sit with these people on an individual by individual basis and really share with them why it is that they perceive that I'm different. You see, our, our experiences in life, well, they, they shape us. One of the things that I heard recently that I've caught on and, and am going to use on a regular basis is this idea, do you allow the experiences of your life to define you or refine you? You see, in the last eight years, I have faced this concept. I just didn't have the words really to put with it, but but suddenly, God provided those words. Somebody challenged me with this whole thing. I got the concept. I've been struggling with the concept. But suddenly, it became very clear that my struggle over the last few years has really been, am I going to allow situations to define me, or am I going to allow those things to refine me? You see, most of the time, we allow experiences to define us. And we do that because individuals out there, well, that's how they define us. Ah, oh, poor Andy. If he just wouldn't have done this, if this person wouldn't have done this, this has really defined their life. It's, it's who they are. It's amazing to me how quickly we go from being a hero to a zero just based on an experience. And we allow that to become the definition of our life. What other people think but the problem with what other people think is that their thinking about us usually stops and is limited to just certain experiences. They're not walking with me or you day in and day out. They're not putting the whole picture together. They're just taking one snapshot and saying, well, this is who Andy Frott is. And while it certainly is part of my story, certainly it would be part of your story, the things that you have been. If you don't continue walking, you don't think, see the other things. And sadly, myself and probably you and many others, we allow ourselves to be defined by a moment in time. Let me make this spiritual for you. That was the problem with you and I when it came to our relationship with God. You see, sin defined our relationship with God. We couldn't get past it. There was no way to have a real relationship, the one that God intended for us, because sin became our definition. God looked down, and while he saw his creation, he saw that it was marred by sin. And a perfect and holy God can't be in the presence of sin. There are no exceptions. I'm not one, nor are you one. And so that standard is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That God cannot be in the presence of sin. Now, God decided that he did not want that to be our definition. So while we were yet sinners, Christ, well, he died for us. And he was raised from the dead. The only one 
in history that lived a perfect life so that he could be the perfect sacrifice for all of that sin, which allowed God to go from defining us by sin to refining us. Now, God looks at you and I, and he offers us the free gift of salvation. Once you and I, we accept that we need a savior. Listen, you can be a good person and still need a savior. Your goodness is always compared to other people and and yours in my eyes, but God compares your goodness to himself and you are never going to be good enough. And so you need a savior. And he provided the same savior for everyone. So that it doesn't matter if you think that your sins are smaller than mine, if you've labeled and defined me as a terrible person while allowing yourself off the hook, you and I need the same Savior. And so God provided that. He provided Jesus, but he made it a thing of free will, that you and I have a choice. We either accept that we're in need of a Savior, and we allow God to start the process of refining us, or we reject the gift of a savior and later maybe sooner you and I are going to be defined by our sin and that definition is going to keep us from an eternity with God that definition is going to keep us from having a right relationship with our creator if we allow God to refine us if we accept the free gift of Jesus then Jesus becomes our definition. That when God looks at us, what he sees, he sees is Jesus. And it's an amazing concept. God doesn't take away all of our sins. He allows Jesus to take on all of our sins. God's not excusing anything. He's allowing his son to take the consequences for the sin. Listen, you and I are never going to be perfect until we get into the presence of God. And so life becomes about defining and refining. The things in my life that I wish more than anything in the world could go away. The things in my life that I wish I had never done from when I was a little kid all the way up through. Well, those are the things that have been consistently in God's mind, available for him to use to refine. That if I open my eyes and instead of wishing they would go away, look at them in reality, then God can refine me. He can use them to create, to mold, to fashion a better me. The world, probably some of the people around you, the truth is they benefit from defining you from where you've been. God wants to refine you for where he wants you to go. So a simple truth is about defining and refining. Which one are you allowing God to do in your life? Are you allowing the experiences of your life to stop you and to define you right there? Some of us, some of us have been defined by something years and years and years and years and years out here. Secondly, let me challenge you. Are you defining other people from those moments? Are you looking at other people and all you see is a moment that you heard about that you might have even witnessed back here? Or are you allowing them the opportunity to be refined by their Savior? Are you allowing them the privilege of making Jesus' sacrifice worthwhile? Do you believe that Jesus can refine Or do you benefit from defining people from where they are? See, we're all human. It is really easy to benefit while we define somebody else as a terrible person. We're going through that process right now in politics. It's all over the place. People trying to define other people. But what we want to do is to set up a process of refining. In the next few weeks, I'm going to continue to share with you our philosophy down here at the Epicenter. Down here is part of Drash Ministries and Grace First and Marketplace. So there's simple truth in life. Either God is going to define you at some point 
or another. Or you're going to allow God to refine you. And Jesus becomes your definition. He becomes what God sees. It's a defining moment. Hopefully, you have done that. Hopefully, you and I have taken the opportunity to bend our knee and say, God, you can run my life way better than I could run. And I want Jesus to be my defining moment so that you can then refine.